my dad got him a start. Then my brother's after me. You could hear the noise from where we lived. But nothing prepared you for the size of the place. They put me to work in 201. That's what we called her. We knew she'd be the largest passenger ship in the world. But we didn't call her Titanic then. I was there from the beginning. I watched the ship race play the keel blocks. They set big wooden blocks on the split way to start with. Then the keel at top of it, like the back bone. Then the frame was attached to that, like a skeleton. Workshops everywhere. It took weeks to find your way around. The workshops were every trade you ever heard of. Painters, seal makers, coppersmiths, boiler makers, cabinet makers. I even learned a bit about French policy of them. Our lovers was a fine place to work, but dangerous. Every ship crossed the lake, and there'd be lots of injuries besides. I was in the engine works for a while. Very well equipped it was. That's where we built the triple expansion engines. Two of them, each as high as a three-story house. I worked in the frame bending shop. We had heat steel beams in the furnace, then hooked them on to slabs of cast iron. It's hot and curved. Probably 100 degrees Celsius right now. I'm not exaggerating. It's probably 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. Shell plates that made up a hull weighed up to four and a half tons. They were taller than the dock. The plates were overlapped on the edges. Some were raised one after another. We called it clincher. One of the four men taught me years ago. That's how you built these ships. I worked as a heater boy. You had to heat the rivets on a wee plate. You pumped the bellows till the rivet was white hot. Then you get a hold of it with your tongs and throw it up to the catcher. And he put it in the hole in the plate for the holder up. There were two of us on the other side of the plate for the holder up. We had to hammer the rivets to fill the hole before it turned all red. The double bomb. That's a wee space we called the tanks made up of steel plates. The rest of the river squad all had to fit into that gap. One of the four men would check each It's other really hot in here. It's like but probably 50 degrees Celsius. Oh. He's right after work. I get scared working down in that double bottom. You only had candles for light. And the constant hammering against the shell pits. You can hear it all over Belfast. Some of those boys ended up stone deaf, so did it. We were paid 31 bob a week. The heater boy and catch were at 16 bob. But we all worked the same 54 hours. The upper deck was steam too, and part of the strength of the ship. There's no straight lines on the ship. And when you look down the lower deck, you can see the shear of the hull to stop her flexing at sea. The stern frame had to be strong enough to take the rudder and turning in heavy seas. You'd have all these timbers and guy wires to steady the frame, and men scurrying around like ants underneath. When we came to launch day, I was torn between pride and fear. The standing wings were coated in tallow, train oil and soft soap. So the ship would slide when they shifted her weight off the blocks. That was the most dangerous part. When the shipwrecks were knocking away the last props, they were under compression, you see, and the sliding wings would be released by the hydraulic trigger. 100,000 people watched the launch. Some paid a bob to sit in the reserve seating. There were extra trams laid on. Then we all went off to the pub to wish her well. Doc, you were proud to be an island man that day. And Titanic was the pride of Belfast.